Math April 27th, week 3, Matthew making omelettes and sausages. Step 1, crack 6 eggs into a bowl. Mm. Can you, uh... Just, yeah. Because that's, uh, not good to put that around. Ah, crap. Tiny piece of shell. You'll need to take out the shell piece. Can't leave it in there. Damn it. Okay, throw the egg away and then collect the egg shell piece. Throw. It's too deep in there, you can't get at it. Go wash your hands, don't rub them on your pants. Okay. Eggs have salmonella. Hold this while I wash my hand from touching the egg. Very important. Eggs have salmonella. The outer shells of the eggs especially are covered in salmonella, which is why you don't. You want to make sure you wash your hands. Why don't we wash the eggs? Because it's just... Okay. This time, make sure you're cracking properly so you get an even split. Three hits. Perfect split. There you go. Something my dad taught me. Three hits, even split. Three hits and split. And I'll just put it like that. Three hits, perfect even split. This could have gone with it. You may as well just throw it in there. Okay, wash hands. Next step, Stir grab it. out the milk, add this much milk into that. Being very careful with measuring so you don't exceed it. Half of that? Yeah. Then pour it in? Yeah. I don't know why milk would go with eggs. There is a reason. It actually adds volume and fluffiness to the eggs. Ooh. Mm -hmm. So that's how you make a really fluffy egg. Mm-hmm. Well, now I know that. Grab the fork. Fork. And stir it. Blend is the term you're going to use and... Wait, we have a blender. No. You are going to blend with a fork, breaking each yolk and ensuring that it's properly divided into the... No. Like this. Like stabbing it. Like stab, stir around, stab, stir around. No. Like this. Give me the fork. I'll show you what I mean. I've already split three of them. Just give me the fork. So you... Go like this, lifting and blending and ripping as you go until you're sure they're all split and broken. And then once you're sure they're all broken and there's no intact yolk, then you do what's called whisking, like that. So we don't even use an actual whisk? 
Nope, you use a fork to whisk eggs. Continue with the whisk until the milk is fully blended. You would tell me when it's fully blended because I can't tell. Notice the small reverse rotating of the fork. It is now fully blended because you cannot see the milk anymore. This goes away. I do not know many differences between stuff. That's why you learn. Next step, set this aside. Shred the cheese. Not like that. Angle it so that the furthest tip is away from you. That's it. This does not make very nice cuts. Okay, well you're actually supposed to drag the cheese along it, not it along the cheese. It's more that the cheese is breaking. Would you like me to do it? No, not really. I'm just used to using the larger ones, the ones that are easy to tr go through a lot at okay. once. Well, when it's full, you tap, you flip it over, and then you do it again. Being half asleep. Forget to turn it over and tap. When it gets close to your fingers, I'll take over. You're getting it all over the floor. It's getting all over everything because it's going all over the place. Here, I'll do it. No, I have Can to... Can I show you a method that'll work that won't get it all over? Doing it slower? Nope. Here. I'll show you how mummy shreds. Take this. Okay, this is how sh professionals do it. They angle the shredder along the base of the bowl, like so. You see it? Mm-hmm. They take the cheese, take a chunk, shred along... This way. Mom, you're using the wrong side of the grater. No, I'm not. That's <laughs> the small side. <laughs> Got you. Do you want to try it this method? Not really. I just prefer to do it regardless. Doesn't mind. I don't mind it. I don't mind either way. I just prefer to get it done. This is the safe method though. This is the way that professionals do it. The reason being, it doesn't get the food all over. Mm -hmm. You're not running the risk of grating your fingers. Which I tend to do a lot, especially when I'm doing because large chunks of cheese. It is away from you. That should be enough cheese. I hope. The rest of this. No onion. <laughs> gets uh, wrapped in saran wrap and put away. And then rip it. There you go. Wrap it real good and put it back where they keep their cheese. There you go. Half asleep, man. He's on the job. Now you take this and you give it a quick little scrub down so that it doesn't get permanently stuck with the cheese. Set cheese aside. Aside. Onion. Diced onion. Peel the 
find your knife first. This is where it should be, because this is where I put it last time I cut. Not, not last time I cut, last time I cleaned the knife. There it is, right underneath everything else. So do you remember how I taught you to do it? Cut off the both ends? Cut off both ends. One end. It's two ends. Peel off outer two layers. Throw all of that away. Welcome. Now I cut. Now it. you dice it as small pieces as you possibly can. Now, this is where you can choose to use a blender. If you cut them down to quarters, you take those pieces, that's good enough, take those pieces. Put them in the blender. Come over here. I've used the blender before, but not this higher tech one. Put it into the blender. Have you ever heard of a hand blender before, Mom? Well, that's what would happen if you put your hand into a bl any blender, really. No, a hand <laughs> blender is literally, you use your hand to activate the blender. It's a, mm -hmm. it's one of the things where you go, the reason we want such fine cuts is because it's an omelet. So you see where it says chop? Chop. Stop. Off. Stop. Off. Not chopping at all. Pieces might be too big. I, I think it might be best to um, mix it. Cutting. I think it's okay. So the, our blender is not strong enough to do it, but uh, I think the thing I need to get next is a food processor, because those are designed specifically for that. So that'll be the next thing I buy when I get some money. I'll get a food processor. If for I us. start crying right now, this is going to be the first time I've ever cried during making onions ever. Is your eyes starting to water too? <laughs> yeah, just get her done. Get them all chopped up real small. As small as you can. Because we want real small pieces for this. It's just a lot of really, really small pieces. Any big pieces you see, cut them small. And then, okay, that should be good. Take out a bowl. I'm not done yet. There's okay. still a bunch of big, big pieces that I need to. last bowl and put the onion into the bowl. That is a lot of onion cuts that I just did. Mm -hmm. After this I need to wash my hands, right? And you also need to wash the cutting board. Because the next thing we're cutting is meat. And what do we know about cutting 
two different types of things. Not good cross, can you activate the thing for me? Cross contamination, that's right. So now we take the onion. diced onion, set it aside. The diced mm. peppers, set them aside. And then he cleans the cutting board and the knife and the area that he just used. How about we just cut to the rest of Chop, dice, dice, slice, slice. Next step, you're going to be dicing the sausages. Now you'll notice they are still frozen. There is no they plastic. No, it's not plastic. It's but. the skin. It's fine. Wait, it is? Yes. Oh. And the reason we cut from frozen is because if you don't, then they won't cube properly. So do I start? Yeah. That is some thick skin. Mm -hmm. Even this knife's having a bit of trouble going through it. Yeah. I need to get a knife sharpener and start sharpening our knives. You mean a whetstone? Yes. A Japanese one or a normal one? Japanese. Because Japanese ones are always the best. Am I right? Not just that, but we're... These are Japanese knives. All right. It does not want to split so there. So now, you take... No, you're not done. You take this and you cut it into four because you want tiny little pieces. This is an omelet, and it needs tiny pieces. That's a double. Did I miss and a double? Three of them in a line, and cut through all three. Oh, I know what we forgot to do. We forgot to put your hair up. Don't need it. She insisted on it. Why? Because it's proper food etiquette. You're supposed to have your hair up. Uh, I think one of my elastics is over by the computer. Can you? Grab it and put it on me while I'm doing this because then I yeah. can. Okay, that's Resuming, all his hair has now been put back. It is properly diced into small pieces. What do I look like? Like the person with their hair tied back. Okay. Now we turn the two frying pans to eight. Now, why eight is we need to preheat the pans. So they're the right temperature, and then once it is the right temperature, we reduce to six mm -hmm. for the actual cooking. Mm -hmm. This is the one that's going to have all the ingredients in it. That one's going to be just the sausages. So should I just pull? No. You need the spatula. A spatula. Yes. What country invented the spatula? I'm not, I think Italy. Close. Close location wise. There's like a lot of countries that are close to Italy. Can you be more specific? Europe. I'm joking. You got it correct. <laughs> I was trying to be funny. Okay, so as the. Why butter, is it smoking? Because there's something. There's stuff was, on the actual grill. Yeah. So as Why? the butter is melting, you want to spread it around the pan. Because that's for safety. No. Nope. The butter is actually for flavor in this case because we have non-stick. I know. I know. And they don't actually require any grease of any kind. But yeah, what is that stuff? 
That's like butter. No, on the on the actual. Um, oh, it's a copper and diamond finish with titanium. No, and, I'm talking about these. Oh, it's from when I was cleaning it. Oh. Yeah, it's fine. It's not gonna kill us. All right. Oh, so okay. now you take your onion and pour it in bit by bit. You want an even cover of onion, not big chunks. And then spread it out so it's evenly spread across. And then you just pour stuff in while I do this essentially, right? Yeah. And then comes the sausage, which is on your other side. Um, it goes in with these. Okay, I'm nice. Like, Grab the sausage. And just pour it in? And put it in. Now what's super important is... Spread. Not just spread, but you need to even cook it. Okay, here. Taking, when you put it up on the sides, it's not actually cooking. The base is where the cooking occurs. One sec. I got a bit of meat on my leaf. Okay, so while that is doing its cooking. I got a bit of meat on my sleeve. We put this aside. And put the sausages in. And take these. And just drop them in. And use another spatula. Another? The other spatula. It should be over there, but it's gone. We okay. own two. What? No, there. Two. I found it. Okay. And it separate the sausages from each other. Like that. And it flew out. I'll have to pick it up and put it back in. It's like a freaking bird. Am I right? Yeah. Okay. Looks like it's to heat now. So we can turn it down to six in both cases. Stir this, remembering to put everything back in the center when you're done. Okay, put it back in the middle. Squeeze it all back into the middle. Can I show you something? Mm. Hold this. So, you're holding the spatula wrong. I'm holding it normally. You want a finger on top for control. See how that gives me added control over the spatula? Yeah. Same thing with these, because with these ones you're going to be rotating them as you're cooking them. I and think, you need to be I able think to I'm, use your finger for control. Can you do those, cause the sausages? Because I'm, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do that right. Oh, let those cook. They were in a pile in the middle. Okay. They got to cook for a little bit because the sausage needs to brown. I feel like we're a vlog channel. 
Okay, so remember, this one is for sausages, Matthew. This one is for sausages, okay. and this one is for the eggs. It's very important not to get them mixed up. Because, yeah, my sleeves are cold, like my sleeves are wet, and I have tiny bits of food on them. I'm gonna quickly go do something. Mhm. Mm different spatula for each item. Hello. I have returned. Hello, returned. How are you? Okay, so the thing about sausages is the way to know that a side is cooked is when it's fully and completely browned. These are not fully and completely browned. They're starting to, but they're not fully and completely browned. Okay. So when it's fully and completely all the way around, 360 degrees. Brown. Brown. Dark brown. Then it's fully cooked all the way through and it's healthy and safe to eat. Yay. Do we put the eggs in yet or? Nope. See how the meat's cooking? Mm -hmm. We gotta make sure the meat itself is fully browned just like we do with that. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. May I have a water bottle? I'm really thirsty. Go for it. I also hope my toes go down. Ah, that's a lot better. Thank you. You saw and heard nothing. I know nothing of what you are speaking. <laughs> you know what I think? What? I think it's crazy. This is good. Yeah, da, 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 da. I also want to make some tea to go with the omelets, but I'm not sure if we have enough room. I am not right now. Right now it's focus on cooking time. Yep. Very, very important time. did something wrong there. Yeah. Cross contamination. He did. <sighs> As you can see there. I was trying to signal it to you. Sticking. Sticking. Yeah. Alright, so the meat here. Does it look cooked to you? It looks fairly brown to me. Needs a little bit more time on the other side. You think? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, flip them around. I'm pretty sure my people are going to notice that you used the wrong spatula, so. Yeah. No one needs to use code names. Yeah, those look ready for me, to me, anyway. Alright, so now you safe. collect everything into the very middle, like a little pile. And it seems that it's burning slightly. Which is why I'm saying it needs, it's ready. Okay. So now you take the egg and you 
starting in the middle, you slowly pour in a circular outward method, ensuring that you're completely covering all the vegetables and everything that's in it. And then go wash your bowl. You need to put this down. So now Can we're you going. Keep an eye on it while I clean this. I can't wait to eat. Do you agree? Mm -hmm. My mouth is watering already. Salmonella, go away. Salmonella, burn your hand. There's one song called Burn Your Hand, and I really did not like that song. Okay, so this is going to take a little while because it has to evenly cook a flat, even layer all the way around. And then you're going to inch the spatula underneath and flip the whole thing over. Right, what? Because it has to cook on both sides. How will you do that part? Too? I don't think I'm going to do that very well. This is more of a learning experience, so. So you notice how it's bubbling? Yeah. That means it's forming a solid base. Mm-hmm. When do we add the cheese? Not until the third step after when? it's been flipped. That's garbage. Don't be playing with garbage. That just appeared in my pocket all of a sudden. I was had my hands in my pocket and then suddenly... Okay, just hold this. Okay, so, as you can see, it's starting to fill. So now, I want to do some of this. To allow the stuff on top to ooze out a little bit. Otherwise, it will not fully cook all the way through. And we need it to. Yeah, so it's very important that it is thoroughly cooked through. Because it's eggs. And meat. And meat. Especially meat, because meat can have worms, so on and so forth. This looks like it's sufficiently solid on the other side now that I should be able to give it a flip. Should be in the keyword. 